All right, guys, welcome back. So we're going to be doing the load test on this generator, and I'm going to use my travel trailer like I normally do to provide the loads. And so basically at the end of the video, I'm also going to go over some things that I've learned about the generator and things you may want to know. So this is 120 volts. It's 240 volts as well. And when you use an adapter like this, it goes from a four prong plug, the L1430, and it'll go down to this travel trailer plug for a 30 amp travel trailer. And then basically what happens is you lose a hot leg. So you can see here it says 120 volts, but I'm only going to be using one hot leg. So I'm only getting half of the power out of the generator because each hot leg provides about over 20 amps of power. So I can still use these plugs if I want to get more power, but I'm only going to get a little over 20 amps supposedly out of this. So we'll see what happens after I start the test. I have a couple meters to verify. I have my more expensive meter, which this one runs about $400, but my cheaper meter sometimes seems to get off in the lower loads. So let's get started. So basically I have everything hooked up. I'm going to show you the amp meter or the watt meter basically live on the screen as we add a few loads and we'll see how much I can actually get out of this generator on one hot leg. So a little automatic light just came on, so that's going to make the meter go up a little. We're going to turn on my AC unit now, and I'm going to put it on auto. So the fan speed will be on high, and then eventually the compressor will kick on, and that's when you'll see the higher load. So there goes the fan. And so now in about 15 or 20 seconds, we'll have the AC compressor kick on, and then you'll hear the generator rev up, and then our amp should jump up to around 25 or so and come back down in a second. And you'll see it here on the meter as we watch. And there it goes, so now you hear the generator rev up. And so this generator is now running a 15K AC unit that's on my trailer. And I don't have a soft start or anything on it, it's just the way it came from the factory, just to give you guys something for reference. But we're going to turn on a few other items now. Right now my converter is on, so as I turn on these lights, it's going to actually draw more power from the converter to keep the battery charged on the DC setup. Now, normally under these tests with other generators, I will use my microwave, but if I use a microwave, that's another 10 amps right off the bat after it gets going. And so with the AC unit and the microwave, it should overload the generator right away. So we're gonna provide some other different loads and kind of creep up on the max just to see about how much we can get. So I'm gonna turn on a few other things and we're also gonna go check the generator real quick. So as we take a look out here and we look at the different meters, you can see it says 15 amps on the one on the screen, but this one's showing just a little bit less. So sometimes I often wonder which one is actually more accurate, my high dollar meter or the one that I built, because that one is getting a little older now, but I still trust it seems to work good, but we'll go turn on a few other items. So we'll go over here and grab this hair dryer real quick. And this hair dryer draws about 1,750 watts of power. I'm not gonna turn it all the way on real quick. I'll turn it up slow but I just have it plugged into the side of my trailer. That way everything we draw will be coming from the trailer. That way the generator has to work to provide the power to it, obviously. So we'll turn it on slow, just turn the fan on first. Now you can see the meter changes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the first heat setting. And then we're gonna go back over to the generator and verify between the two meters just to make sure that they're both accurate. So as we take a look, the high dollar meter is showing about 18.6 amps and we're almost at 19 on the other meter. I don't have any red lights on yet. And so far the voltage on both meters is actually really accurate, running about 120 volts. So, so far that's all pretty good. But we'll go over here and turn on a few other items and we'll bump up the hair dryer probably one more notch and kind of see how, how much we can really get from this generator. Will it go over 20 amps real easy, 22? So now as we take a look, now we're getting just about the rated load at 20.8 amps and I don't have any red lights on, nothing is flashing yet. And to be honest, when I was doing a pre-test of this, I let it sit here and run for about 10 minutes and it didn't change, it, it pretty much just ran the load just fine. So we'll turn on a few other items and you'll see what happens here in a minute. I'm gonna turn on this light, which this is actually not an LED light, it's actually incandescent, the only one I have in my trailer. Turn on that little fan. And now as we look at the amperage again, we're definitely over the 20.8 and it's holding steady and fine right here. You can see that there's no red light flashing, which normally when they get close to their overload, it'll start flashing a red light or even be steady on at this point. But so far just on one power leg, it's not having any issues. So we'll turn on one other item. We'll turn on this fridge. This will draw probably another two amps roughly after it kind of settles down and we'll see how well it does at holding just this electric fridge. 
and the generator shuts down. So herein lies the problem with the 30 amp RV group is that you only get half the power for this generator. And honestly, it's really too big for a 30 amp RV group anyway. But for the 50 amp RV group, this opens a world of options for you guys. Or if you still wanna use this for a home backup generator, you can to power up some of the low power options. But after taking apart this generator, I found out that you know the build quality is actually really good. They use all the heat shielding around the muffler like they should be doing. They add a lot of extra foam to help keep the generator quiet but also just taking a look at the overall build quality of the generator and the attention to detail it pretty much matches up with a lot of other generators that i've had and i've reviewed as well and when i took a look closer to other things like the inverter board right well i thought it was too close to the foam on the front panel and they were actually touching but if i stick my hand through the battery door i can actually get it in between there because there is also a vent at the bottom of that foam so it actually allows for plenty of cooling on the inverter board so it doesn't get too hot and if you look at the grounding lugs and the grounding wires, they put heat shrink on everything like they should on all the other generators. So it's not like they, they haven't built generators before. They've done a good job. Now, there is one thing I do want to show you is that underneath here, you have your battery cables, right? And if you take a closer look, I'll get the camera in there. But the battery cables have a little protective sheath on it and some shrink tubing. But if you go over to where you connect them right here, after I had the generator for a couple days, I started looking more at the attention to detail and just happened to notice that the cables were underneath the frame. And so here lies a small problem is that here, I'm going to pull this out. So now you can see that the battery cables are underneath the frame of the generator. And as the generator runs, it vibrates and it'll work its way through the insulation and down into the copper causing a short. And I already talked to Genmax about this problem and they're already fixing it because you see the sheet that's down underneath there. It's a protective sheath basically that's supposed to go over the battery cable. So we ended up pulling on it and the sheet actually came the rest of the way. So it's possible it might just be too short, but again, they are working on fixing this little issue. And so if you happen to buy this unit, just make sure you check on that just to make sure you don't have a problem down the road so i had several viewers asking me well does it have a fuel shut off and technically no it doesn't but technically yes it kind of does if you haven't seen my other video generator secrets i show you where there is actually a fuel shut off position because if you take a look at the fuel valve or the fuel petcock what we're going to do is verify but you have this line that comes in up top that's your in and then you have the out on the bottom we're going to pop this off real quick and then we're going to actually see does the fuel actually stop when we put the fuel selector valve in a certain position so pop this off then I'm gonna shove this rag under here and then we're gonna adjust the dial real quick. So we'll move this into a position where I know it does run. And so this will start basically closing that fuel valve. So what we're gonna do is verify on the other side. And as you can see, it's actually still kind of dripping coming out of the fuel petcocks. So what we need to do is go readjust the selector switch to where we know the fuel will shut off. So we'll go to the other side and I'm gonna turn the dial just a little bit more now as we verify one more time you can actually see the fuel now is shut off so now we'll make sure the generator runs at that position and then we'll go ahead and make a mark so i went ahead and marked the dial and i have the generator up and running just to kind of show you guys real quick but as it vibrates i also like to see if any fuel comes out of the fuel valve and as you can see right now nothing's coming out so for the most part it's actually off and so now you can drain the carburetor in this position and all you have to do is mark it and i even went a little bit past where the original mark was so now you can see that it kind of does actually have a fuel shutoff valve it's just not really indicated on the dial Another thing I don't recommend is firing up your generator in the garage. Me being a mechanic, whether I'm working on boats or jet skis or other items, I always try to have a lot of ventilation like this whole house fan going in the garage if I do run something for a minute or two. So overall, my final thoughts on the generator is that Genmax did a good job. I don't see anything that indicates why I wouldn't buy it if it fit the needs for me. So I hope you guys like the information on the Genmax generator. Make sure you like and subscribe. And until then, I hope to see you guys next time.